The Dark Legion, accompanied by a horde of bizarre creatures, is gathering to perform a ritual to descend into the mortal realm. They cheer and surround the tower, atop which a radiant pink gem glows. It is intriguing, as its contents remain a mystery, but undoubtedly it holds tremendous power. Suddenly, a beam of dazzling light imbued with unparalleled strength emerges, causing the monstrous horde to scatter in fear and retreat. One of the figures from the Dark Legion has discovered that the power emanates from the sword held by a formidable leader. He is none other than Sword King Ray Chime, a handsome and valiant leader. He charges forward and declares to the soldiers and other leaders that he will clear the path for them to annihilate the Dark Legion and the vile monsters. On the other side, the Grave Watcher Jork Belmire rides atop a colossal dinosaur skeleton, commanding the army with a monstrous skull weapon in hand. His weapon exudes magical power, seemingly ready to absorb the souls of the sinful. Next to Ray Chown and Jork Belmire, another formidable force emerged. The beautiful yet equally courageous Saint Maria Jaeger, besides Ray Chang and Jorp Belmire, another army appears, led by the beautiful yet courageous Saint Maria Jaeger. With a determined gaze, she targets the glowing pink gem at the center of the ritual site and signals that they must halt the descent ritual. The soldiers prepare to charge, but it's too late. The gem suddenly bursts into a blinding light, and cracks begin to emerge with the accompanying sound of shattering. Then, unexpectedly, the tower and the gem explode into numerous fragments. Everyone is in shock and fear at the sight. The plaguers channel their fear towards the new threat. Who is he? He looks extremely dangerous with that appearance. Who can defeat this foe and save us all? The dangerous entrance of the new target in the fifth season unfolds. The boss of the season is illuminated by a strange green light lifting him up. His fierce gaze is directed towards the warriors and his cloak is blown away, revealing two hands with two sharp swords ready to strike any daring foe. He is known as the Lord of the Plague and the strange light surrounding him adds an eerie touch to his presence. No one knows the extent of the contagion he can spread, but the Lord himself takes precautions by wearing a mask and gloves to prevent any potential danger. Ray Chang, always at the forefront, quickly commands his army to charge towards the goal of defeating the Lord of the Plague. However, before they can engage the green light carrying billions of bacteria shatters the army in agony. The power of the Lord of the Plague is indeed formidable. In the triumph of the victor, the valiant leader stands and watches as the enemies succumb to the bacteria surrounding them. The stench of death is so palpable that one can almost imagine the gruesome extent of the casualties. The lifeless bodies pile up under the onslaught of the Lord of the Plague's deadly technique. The early charge proves futile, and the soldiers fall in heaps. Indeed, the vile boss, Maria Jaeger, enraged, charges at the Lord of the Plague with her sword, risking everything. However, her strength is not enough to withstand the boss's onslaught, blood splatters in horror, and the main faction seems to be at a disadvantage. No one can stand against him. Even Sword King Ray Chang lowers his head, unwilling to witness the unfolding scene, or perhaps he is plotting something in his mind. Ray Chang then reassures himself that he doesn't want to die, making a decision for himself. Amidst this chaotic situation, what should Ray Chang do to survive and overcome? One option is to take a gamble, as sometimes luck may prevail. The second option is to find an escape route. It's a bit unusual, isn't it? In the 36 stratagems, fleeing is the top strategy, taking advantage of the Lord of the Plague's momentary distraction. Ray Chang swiftly turns and runs to preserve his life, leaving his astonished comrades behind. Sword King, Captain, they shout, urging Ray Chang to come back. However, escaping the formidable boss is no easy feat. In the eyes of the Lord of the Plague, those defeated are just foolish humans, and no one can escape the deadly plague sword. Where do you think you're going? The boss roars and unleashes a deadly move to finish off Ray Chang. The surge of energy from the deadly plague sword shoots towards Ray Chang like a thousand arrows and death is imminent. Paradise beckons, and at this moment, only divine intervention seems capable of saving him. Fortunately, seemingly out of nowhere or maybe from the heavens, a superhero appears and uses a powerful move to block the boss's onslaught. As it turns out, these heroes always wait until there's no one left to fight, only showing up when the situation is dire and someone is on the brink of death. By the way, hasn't the Grave Watcher Jork Billmeyer shown any moves yet? It's unclear where he and the army of skull-headed warriors have disappeared to. At this moment, the people rejoice and place all their hope in the young man who descended like a god. Who is he? Looking at him from behind, it's impossible to recognize, but that doesn't matter. What matters is that they are saved. It's the Hero King, everyone, he's incredibly handsome, and his armor looks super cool. Although his face is a bit scratched up, Everyone can rest easy now because with the Hero King in action, the Lord of the Plague is nothing more than a mosquito. The Hero King bravely charges towards the enemy, and it's understandable since, besides him, who else dares to face the boss?
However, it's puzzling that everyone usually has supporting troops, yet the hero king appears to be fighting alone. Nevertheless, with his courage and might, he's a force to be reckoned with. The boss unleashes his mood, confident that no one can withstand his three strikes. Equally matched, the Lord of the Plague launches a move, and the Hero King counters each attack. The magical light emanating from both envelops the battlefield, leaving everyone in awe. You're quite impressive compared to the others. The boss taunts, you sneaky one. You still have time to turn back if you don't want to be squashed like an ant by me. Don't even dream about it, you greenish plague, retorts the Hero King. Thus, the boss and the Hero King clash in close combat. And in this moment, there must be a victor and a vanquished. It seems that the Lord of the Plague has exhausted all his energy to unleash a final move, creating a colossal sea of plague that covers the entire ceremonial area. It surrounds both him and the Hero King, creating an arena with no way out. It's terrifying. A deadly green that gives an uneasy feeling to everyone as no one from the outside can see through the sea of plague to observe what's happening inside. The situation looks dire. Kang Yusung, St. Maria Javier, calls out the Hero King's name in pain, fearing for his life. How dare you attack me alone? You truly are foolish. You don't know your own limits. This is the hope of humanity. This is the Hero King. You will die alone in this sea of plague, taunts the Lord of the Plague. The boss is delighted, thinking that with the deadly sea of plague he created, no one will be able to reach or save the Hero King, a painful and solitary death for someone who foolishly tried to help humanity. Expecting the Hero King to be frightened, the boss is surprised when the Hero King expresses gratitude. Thank you, he says. Anyway, I couldn't let others see my full strength. Earlier, I was worried that I had to do something to cover up, but luckily, with you, boss, keeping it hidden, no one can see it. It's quite refreshing. How can you? Ah, no. Tearing through the sea of plague, the righteous light of the Hero King shines like lightning, causing everything to shatter. The brilliance is so blinding that people have to shield their eyes from its tremendous power. Oh my god, how is this possible? The Hero King is truly formidable. Now the grave watcher, Jorp Billmeyer, appears unexpectedly, a surprising and admiring sight. Did he contribute any moves earlier to fight against the boss of this season? Well, it seems like he has made quite a contribution now. Oh, unbelievable, a bewildered soldier exclaims, asking someone to pinch him to check if he's dreaming, we've won, we've been saved. Defeating the Lord of the Plague, the Hero King stands like a god before all of humanity, powerful, formidable, and handsomely charming. How can anyone resist such charisma? Hero King is number one. Cheers erupt, celebrating the end of the season with the Lord of the Plague's dissent ritual. We've won, we've won, and we've prevented the apocalypse. The Lord of the Plague has been defeated. Random equipment cards have been distributed to all players who contributed to the battle. The top 100 players will receive a skill card on the sword rank, and the top 10 players will be rewarded with a gacha card for a hero rank ancient relic. Player Kang Yusun, who defeated the boss of this season, will be rewarded with a legendary black equipment and the title Lord Slayer Cheers. You will receive a legendary black equipment and the title Lord Slayer Kore. Yusung Yusung. And the world gets to live another year. Kang Yusung is praised during a press conference, with many journalists applauding his achievements among hundreds of players. Kang Yusung stands at the top of the rankings in all four seasons, leading in tower attack rankings, level, equipment, skills, and accomplishments. Truly an impressive feat. He is the number one among all heroes, the hero king Kang Yusung, however. Why does his face not show a hint of joy? Is it because he's used to the title Lord Slayer by now, or is there something else on his mind? Oh, where did they get such an adorable Hero King doll? An excited little girl points to the TV and tells her parents that the Hero King is on TV. It seems like the whole family is a big fan of the Hero King, enjoying his famous battles. There's a unique excitement that comes when seeing their idol on TV, right? Inside the house, they watch the live broadcast of the press conference and interview with the Hero King. Outside, young people are also buzzing with excitement. Everyone is asking each other, Hero King is saving the world again, huh, yeah, Hero King and players worldwide. His red teammate even sells Hero King's jerseys so cool, he's a perfect hero in the eyes of fans and allies. Returning to the press conference, the host directs a question to Yusung, asking him to share his thoughts instead of the assembled heroes. Why is Yusung still keeping the same expression as before, wonders the MC. At this moment, Maria Javier gently nudges Yusung. Reminding him to say something, anything will do, everyone's attention is focused on him. However, Yusung's face remains unchanged, maintaining a rigid demeanor as if he doesn't want to speak at all. Marita Jader clasps her hands and whispers softly, Oh please, just say something, they are broadcasting live, look at you, face with Yusung's stiffness. Maria Jader sweats nervously, feeling embarrassed on his behalf. In the interview room in Geneva, all eyes are fixed on the world-saving hero, awaiting his speech. The top 10 players of the season are present, 
eager to hear about his brave actions, not hesitating to sacrifice themselves to save the world. In response to the audience's expectations, Yu Sung reluctantly lifts the microphone. A speech fine, just for you guys, um, well to be honest, I'm not a hero, I'm just doing it for the money, folks. The entire audience is left in shock, with mouths agape and eyes wide open, they can't believe what they just heard, what on earth, why would he say that, it's unbelievable. As for St. Maria Jaeger, she seems to have disappeared, probably trying to hide her face in embarrassment, absolute silence follows Yusung's unexpected revelation. Listening to Yusung continue, actually, I've not really cared for a long time, he slams his hand on the table, making a firm statement, oh my goodness, my hero, my hero king. On one fateful day, season one ended and peace in the world suddenly turned into an intense game. For some reason, skyscrapers of all sizes began to sprout up in cities around the world, covering the sky. No one could see the light, they only saw black smoke covering everything. The glow within the towers was a chilling red. What would happen to humanity? No one knew for sure. After a few days, thousands of monsters poured out from these towers, mercilessly slaughtering everyone. Chaos and carnage unfolded everywhere. People thought the apocalypse was upon them, that humans would be devoured by these monsters, with no one surviving in this dreadful situation. The monsters were formidable and ruthless, sparing no one. The crowd was in chaos, people running and trampling over each other. A girl accidentally fell onto the street, unable to continue running terrified. She anticipated the monstrous creature approaching with a massive axe to end her life. The girl could only cry, awaiting imminent death, wondering who could save her. Fortunately, at that very moment, a savior appeared. A golden flame sword swung, severing the colossal arm of the terrifying monster, blood splattered, and the girl, overwhelmed with fear, felt like fainting. Who was this person that could stand against the dreadful horde of monsters? A brave young man, wielding a sword stained with the blood of the monster. At a cool and intense gaze, the players had arrived a spectacular entrance for these heroes. They were monster hunters, possessing extraordinary skills and a sense of righteousness. They faced challenges fearlessly. Their mission to protect the people and stand against the dark forces. Afterward, the New World Order was announced, revealing who the strongest contenders were and who would be defeated. Everything lay behind, waiting for us to explore. Oh, what a monstrous scene. The towers exploded and before us was a horde of monsters pouring out from within. One or two heroes couldn't possibly withstand these ferocious creatures. They were terrifying in their bizarre forms, squid-like machines with massive rotating blades ready to engulf anyone nearby, red spiders covered in poisonous spines, flying dragon-like creatures, wolves with sharp claws, and a formidable three-headed beast capable of breathing fire, not inferior to the legendary Ghidorah that once battled Godzilla in a famous film. These monsters would undoubtedly kill everyone. If they united their forces, I dare not imagine the horrors that would befall humanity. However, we can completely prevent this by attacking the towers at the right time, therefore, players with supernatural powers capable of attacking those towers will be considered heroes of the entire world. Some notable names include Sword King Ray Chang, Saint Maria Jaeger, and the Gravekeeper Jorp Bellmeyer with their respective armies. I haven't catered for a long time. This phrase sounds familiar, doesn't it? Besides Hero King Kang Yusun, who else is here? His statement in the previous press conference caused controversy, consuming much ink from journalists and stirring up waves on social media. The guy sitting reads comments about himself, I do it all just for money, so remember to buy my shirts and monkey posters. Folks, oh my parents, there are so many comments I said that right. Why are they arguing so much? Haha, ha, the top comments are all about this nonsense. The player forums are full of people talking about stuff like this. Kang Yusung wonders. The national player community created when the world turned into a game, Seems quite interesting. The player forum interface also looks quite nice. Here, players can share information from each attack wave to learn from each other's experiences or to exchange items and equipment. Kang Yusung is still reading the comments on the forum about himself and the statement he made the other day. Oh my god, a hero king speaks so brilliantly. It's hilarious. Money is indeed the most important. Another person comments, initially, I was thinking of buying that shirt but looking at its annoying attitude, I'll boycott it. Seeing this, the guy casually replies to see what the anti-fans are saying. Do you think you have the money to buy that shirt? Sure, go ahead and boycott there. It's not right, the anti-fan responds. Are you the hero king? Why are you defending an idol like that? Kang Yusung is startled. Oh no. How does it know I commented? Continuing to read the comments and unconsciously responding to some anti-fans. Oh, hero king, if you see this comment, join my team next season. And you can even be my secret admirer. Another comment says, I'm curious who this hero king is. I hate the way he talks. There's even a dedicated on-site reporter on the forum saying, I'm a reporter and I will wait outside the hero king's house on the next season opening day. Oh, there's a reporter waiting outside. That's really funny. 
After reading, Kang Yusung stands up and walks towards the window, pulling the curtain to look down at his house to see what's going on. Oh my god, what is this? So many people. One, two, three, four, five, twenty, thirty, thirty-six. Oh my god, it's too crowded, it can't count anymore. It's so crowded under my house, I can't bear it. But it's too embarrassing to go out now, can't stay inside forever. But what did I do wrong to deserve this? Why should I hide? Let's go down and see what the reporters are doing. Kang Yusung went downstairs just as anticipated. The swarm of reporters surrounded him, taking pictures, shouting, and bombarding him with a multitude of mundane questions. Yang Yusung, can you spare a few minutes for an interview? What are your thoughts on the upcoming season? Other reporters extended their microphones, inquiring about his statement in the conference where he claimed not to care for a long time. So why did you decide to join the new seasons, if you've lost interest? What do you think about the controversial statement you made? Listening to these questions, Yusung closed his eyes and responded casually, leaving the reporters bewildered. His answers provided no substantial information as he brushed off each question, Yusung remarked. Most of those famous people on TV are just troublemakers and alcoholics. They don't know how to do anything else. Hello? Anyone there? The reporter was left with wide-open eyes, puzzled by the unexpected response from the idol. Kang Yusung spoke with a dangerous smile on his face, saying, let me show you what high-quality entertainment looks like, he extended his arms with a mysterious expression. The bystanders were puzzled, wondering what he meant. Someone commented, what's going on? What is he talking about? Suddenly, the scene became chaotic, and the reporters were startled, wondering what was happening. Under their feet, a thick cloud of dust rose. The new season had opened, the season of six, and the endless maze had begun. While the reporters were still expressing their surprise and confusion, some hurriedly grabbed their recording equipment to capture the unfolding events. On the other hand, the structure of the new tower for the sixth season was being constructed, and it was already 96% loaded. As per the rules, players could enter the tower after carefully reading the information at the gate located just beneath the tower. On the screen, instructions for the new season appeared. The deeper the dungeon exploded, the higher the floating tower would rise towards the sky. Players were advised to pay attention to the tower's height. Hey guys, let's attack the tower to protect the world from apocalypse, let's get started. Returning to the chaotic scene with reporters, while the journalists were busy looking at what was falling, Yusung had easily escaped from the crowd, super cool. Hey dude, I found this flyer reporters gathered around. What's on the flyer? No way, could it be that Hero King Kang Yusung released it to mislead us? And then he ran away, unbelievable wasted time standing here all morning. And now he's gone, let's go home, who knows what to do now. Game map shows Yusung's location. Where is he heading? You've reached your destination. So he daringly passed through the reporters to reveal himself on the street because he's joining the new season. Season 6. Yusung thought to himself, Ah, the map said I've arrived, but why does it look deserted here? Not even a mouse in sight. Looking around, he realized it's the first day of the season, too quiet. Other heroes are probably still sleeping. Haha, -ha, well, I came early, quick and decisive, Yusung thought. The current situation is that most monarchs are satisfied with the shrinkage of the Jester Monarch. Who is this Jester Monarch? Just entered and it sounds strange. The Iron Monarch is laughing loudly and wishes good luck to the one who left the sword behind. The one who left the sword sounds familiar. Right, must be Ray Chang from the last season. Ha, huh? who knows? The Ice Monarch is also laughing and wishing good luck to the one who left the sword. Oh, so they are also laughing and wishing good luck to someone. Yusung is pleased, yes. Keep laughing, keep laughing, the screen displays a notification, your swordsmanship ability has been greatly increased, your magical ability has also increased rapidly, honestly, I don't understand what they are doing, why they are laughing, for what reason, but I believe that those actions are not meaningless. This time, just like during the interview, Yusun recalls the scene from the other day, and the words that went into the ground I haven't cared for a long time, I do everything just for money, guys, so remember to buy my cool monkey-themed shirts and posters. Yusung does these things to earn rewards from those self-proclaimed superiors calling themselves monarchs. Yusung is eagerly anticipating something from observing these people. I'm so excited. This guy is really mysterious because he just spoke. It's really hard to read these handsome guys. Reading what else is on the screen, the notification says, The gold and legendary monarchs laugh heartily and bless the one who left the sword behind. Then the legendary chooses blessing create a big effect. Your luck will increase significantly three times, and one of those three times, you'll have a 100% chance of receiving a legendary reward. Kang Yusung is really formidable. He can open all the rewards at once. Why am I so obsessed with this mysterious smile? Every time he smiles like that, there's something irresistible. With an additional legendary chooser's blessing, it has a powerful impact on the player's gacha tada. Yusung has just obtained a legendary reward. What could it be? Surely something super cool. Yusung's eyes light up. 
eagerly waiting to see what legendary reward he has just received. Oh my goodness, it's legendary, legendary, legendary. Yeah, that's a legendary equipment. It's really awesome, and the cloak looks stunning. It truly suits me. Let me read out the detailed specifications for you. It's a black cloak with golden patterns renowned as the Madness of the Golden Empire. It's a legendary item for defense. Features include Defense 0, Evasion 999, Agility 300. When worn, the shield skill of the Great Archangel can be activated instantly, lasting up to 168 hours. Additionally, when wearing it, you'll be bestowed with the blessing of a knight's determination. In other words, the cloak was given to a knight with abundant faith who resisted the ambush of Elf Gelia in the battle between the two races through the blessing of the Great Archangel. Since the knight couldn't suppress the faith, they were massacred by thousands of elves. A legendary defensive equipment, a hero skill, and a hero relic are now in my possession. What a jackpot. Clad in the legendary black cloak, Kang Yusun confidently strides into the tower. A beam of light instantaneously transports him inside the dark tower. Finally, he has arrived within the dimly lit tower with a few torches flickering. Yusung is ready for battle. Boom, a massive figure, intimidatingly colossal, emerges causing a tremor that sends shivers down the spine of everything in the tower. The red-eyed giant with two menacing tusks steps forward, wielding a gigantic battle axe. He roars, cheek, meet your doom, cheek. It appears that this is the opening act of the Blood Moon Orch Tower level 3, with a maximum of 5 levels. The number of players allowed to enter ranges from a minimum of one to a maximum of four, with the rule of no skipping levels and a shop available. Characteristic Description This is a frenzied battle awaiting you, a war and more. The objective is to defeat the mighty Blood Moon Orse boss on the highest level. Yusun, excited by this challenge, exclaims, Wow, this looks intense. Maybe I should check out the hero skills. Yusun reads the description of the Ice Sword, a hero-class weapon. The sword's characteristics are ice and metal. This sword has the ability to condense frost, creating an ice sword from ice crystal formations. Other players may also receive additional characteristics based on their compatibility with ice magic, skill card level, additional stats, and various other factors. Note that when using additional skills, players cannot wield weapons, but once the skill is activated, the ice sword is considered equipped and can be seen on the equipment bar. Yusung reaches out to grab the ice sword. At that moment, Yusung's compatibility with ice magic increased, and he acquired an additional characteristic, the ability to breathe icy breath. With this new power, there's no need to hesitate any longer. It's time to battle. Excitedly expressing his gratitude to the Ice King, Yusung charges forward like a super cool lightning bolt. With a swift swing of his sword, he slashes through the monstrous creatures. One, two, three, four monsters rush out to resist, but they couldn't withstand the power of the Ice Sword. Oh no, my axe, the monstrous creature roared in anger as its axe was broken into two by the ice sword. Alone, the heroic king charged into battle, swiftly clearing the massive monsters in the blink of an eye. It seems like the outcome of the battle was determined the moment he stepped in, truly formidable. Dozens of giant creatures fell to the ground, frozen and paralyzed by the ice sword's light and icy breath beneath the feet of the heroic king. After the battle, it was as easy as pie. This game seems designed for me to win. Victory, Yusung leveled up, his strength, agility, and intelligence all increased by one level. The Ice Sword Creation skill card also leveled up. Hore, oh well, stop praising me so much, it's just a usual thing. Having passed level one, it was indeed a good start. Yusung wondered if he should try to save the world again. Well, if he doesn't do it, who will save the world? Let's move on, everyone. Opening the second gate, Kang Yusung charged forward like a commander-in-chief. Oddly, this guy didn't use any soldiers at all. He went alone. Ha, huh, what's this? The heroic king widened his eyes as he looked ahead at some strange creature. Underneath, about twenty big guys were surrounding a campfire. What were they doing, waiting for him, perhaps? These giants looked exactly like the ones that were just defeated in level one. Tall, menacing, with sharp fangs, they had noticed Yusung. Hey, it's him and they're coming, the giants exclaimed. He's the warrior who'll take us to Valhalla. Look at that cool armor and sword. A bit small, though, one breath from me and he might fly away. Don't underestimate the enemy, though, and already defeated a bunch out there before crawling in. Let's fight and die with honor. Cheek. Okay, let's see the big guys. Yusung raised his powerful ice sword and was ready to show them who's boss. Launching his attack, he swung his sword down on the giants. Here's your ticket to paradise. I'll let you enjoy the heavens and reunite with your ancestors right now. Boom, a critical hit. The giants went flying in all directions, leaving a messy trail of flesh and blood throughout the tower. Pretty gruesome. Can't believe my eyes. Once again breezing through another level, Yusung was making his way to the fourth floor. He was relieved that he was leveling up steadily. 
but the absence of resting floors made it a bit challenging. Despite the continuous battles, he couldn't complain too much since he was winning every time. Suddenly, something caught Yu Sung's attention, making the Hero King startle. He swiftly turned to see what it was holding his trusty sword tightly. Whoever you are, I'll take you down. Come out, let's settle this. Don't be too confident, Yu Sung declared boldly, ready to face whatever new challenge awaited him. So it turns out that up ahead was a group of holy guards blocking the path leading to the boss's room. They were quite numerous and armed with various weapons. The leader instructed the soldiers behind him that this was a good opportunity for the whole town to witness how formidable a monster leader could be. Advance, fight, and die with honor. Let's teach that warrior a lesson, the leader declared, rallying his troops. At this moment, Kang Yusun realized that the game system had blessed the holy guards with additional blessings. This was getting tricky. The holy guards were cheering exuberantly, energized by the blessings bestowed upon them by the game system. It seemed like they were infused with additional strength and combat spirit, making the situation even more challenging. These bloodthirsty monsters, Kang Yusun thought to himself as the excited holy guards rushed towards him. The cheers and battle cries echoed as they charged, eager to fulfill their mission and show the might of the warrior leader. Yusun took a deep breath, ready to face the onslaught of the enthusiastic holy guards. The battle was about to begin, and the fate of the virtual world hung in the balance. Kang Yusun, though initially confident, found himself overwhelmed by the relentless onslaught of the holy guards. It seemed that the blessing bestowed upon them by the system had significantly increased their strength and resilience. Fighting one after another without a break, this is getting exhausting, Yusun muttered to himself as he prepared to unleash his ice sword technique on the holy guards, however, something unexpected occurred. Oh, what in the world is this? They weren't kidding when they said you can't use the same move two or three times. Why are they so strong? This is not good, Yusun realized, feeling the pressure of the situation. The game's mechanics seemed to be working against him, making the battle more challenging than he anticipated. Yusun, realizing the inadequacy of his ice sword against the empowered holy guards, resorted to using the same move again to buy some time. However, the holy guards proved to be too formidable, rendering his ice sword less effective against their increased strength. Come on, think, think. What else can I do? Yusung pondered, feeling the urgency of the situation in the midst of the chaotic battle. He needed to come up with a different strategy to turn the tide. Without much time to spare, he decided to unleash another wave of ice power against the holy guards, hoping that the dazzling display of icy brilliance might at least momentarily distract them and create an opening for a more decisive move. Yusung continues to slash and tries to figure out a solution. Indeed, as he suspected, the ice sword's attack doesn't deal much damage to these formidable foes. Oh no, it's getting tough. Yusung mutters to himself, visibly getting frustrated. It seems like these creatures possess some sort of resistance to the freezing power of the ice sword. The holy guard is still charging forward, seemingly under the influence of some external force. Yusung, while parrying their attacks, is contemplating his next move. It's clear that his current strategy won't cut it and he needs to find a different approach to overcome this powerful adversary. Yusin quickly leaps up and hangs on a hanging lamp in the tower to evade the giant creatures. He contemplates launching a decisive strike, but realizes he lacks the necessary skill to execute such a move. As the holy guards approach, taunting Yusung as a coward, a stroke of luck comes his way. At this crucial moment, almost like divine intervention, Yusung receives a new legendary equipment piece, the Ice Heart, a hero-level gear with an additional hero-level skill, and even a hero-level crafting function. It's almost unbelievable. Yusung swiftly opens his inventory and equips the Ice Heart, a hero-level accessory, with the function of enhancing the effects of ice attributes. In other words, it amplifies the impact of freezing-related skills, providing a 14% chance to increase damage using ice power and resistance against various forms of cold attacks. Yusung hesitates for a moment. Uncertain of how to utilize the Ice Heart, he quickly reads through the notes on the new equipment. Do not disturb those without frost magic, as there is a risk of freezing, and make sure you have permission from the magic tower before using it. 